Hello and welcome to Praying on Purpose. Uh, today is Tuesday, which means that today and for uh, all Tuesdays going forward, we are going to be focusing on the how, uh, as I had advertised, exploring the methods, mechanics, and techniques of meaningful and effective prayer. Now, I do not have uh, this entire conversation uh, today and going forward planned out and mapped out, but I have committed myself for an undefined period of time to talk about the question of how to properly daven. And I think we should start with the question of why why would I do that? Or why is that even necessary? Or how can I be certain that there will be what to discuss, not just today and next week, but as with Hashem for many Tuesdays going forward? Would I ever think of devoting an ongoing conversation for an undefined period of time to talk about how to properly shake a lulav, or for that matter, blow a shofar, or even keep Shabbos? You see, when it comes to keeping Shabbos, we know that there are 39 malachos, and each of those malachos can be broken down into f- further categories. And there's so much in terms of details and mechanics that we can, in fact, discuss this again and again and again without even without even coming to the so, so, sort of the end of that conversation. When it comes to how to effectively and properly daven, when it comes to discussing techniques and methods of davening, I mean, let's be serious. There are probably a few good ideas and suggestions and tricks, so to speak, that I can share with you. And and that's it. But the reality is the reason why there is so much to discuss over here and the reason why this is such an important question. And I think the reason why this question is unique to the experience of davening is because there is on a very, very foundational level, there's a certain natural tension that we feel. There is essentially almost an obstruction of sorts that we face uh, every time we start to daven. And we need to understand that. We need to recognize that it exists and then try to figure out the best ways to uh, not to avoid it and not necessarily even to walk around it, how to walk through it um, and how to engage uh, in the process of tefillah in a way that is consistent with our lives and our, on a very simple level, on a very basic level, our physicality. Rav Shlomo Volb in the Sefer Ali Shur, in the second volume, he quotes Gemara Nivamos, and the Gemara, Gemara has a, a, a debate of sorts between Rav Chia and Rav Shimon. And they were having a debate as to what exactly should a person be doing with his eyes when davening. So one of them said, and the Gemara doesn't say which one says which, that when a person davens, the person has to go ahead and take his eyes and look downwards. Because the Pasuk says, quoting a Pasuk from Sefer Malachim, that God, so to speak, says, my eyes and my hearts are there, referring to the base Amigdash. So one opinion is that if you want to, so to speak, find God when you're diving, you got to look down. God is here. He's down here on earth with us. The other opinion says, no. So a person has to try to take his heart and position it upwards. As the Pasuk says in Eicha, we just read this several weeks ago, that a person has to try to go ahead and focus his efforts upwards. So they sort, they had a debate of sorts as to, well, which one is it? Am I looking up? Am I looking down? Where am I positioning myself? How am I orienting myself when I dive in? The Gemara tells us the Rabbi Yishmael Bar Yossi came and he says, hey, what are you guys talking about? And they said, we're talking about davening. And he told them a halacha. He says, Kachamar Abba, Abba taught me lamata lamala. He says, my father taught me that I have to do both. My eyes should be looking downwards. My heart should be upwards. In order that we can fulfill, so to speak, both of these uh, and Ravobo goes on to quote the riff in Masechus Brahos, who says, what exactly does, does this mean? Kloman. A person has to try to think in his heart, to concentrate, to focus himself as if he is standing in the heavens. What does that mean? A person has to try to shed himself of the sort of the, 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 the that which draws me to this world, the pleasures, the desires, the interest, I would say the distractions of this world. It doesn't only mean pleasure in the most base sense, but the things that I'm thinking about. You'll forgive me, and we're going to spend, I hope, a lot of time on this, the buzzing and the binging and the clinging in my pockets at all time. I have to remove that. And the, and, and as Chazal have said, he quotes an expression, Pshot gufcha, a person has to try to shed his body from from his from his soul. We have to release our soul. We have to allow our soul to 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 so to speak 
to leave this space in order to be able to soar its way to the heavens to connect with the Ravon Shalom. This is what we need to do when we daven. But then the Rif goes on to say, as does Rabbeinu Yon and others, others do as well, once I reach that point, I have to remember that I am standing here on the ground. And in the most limited sense, and I don't mean this, that this is, this is there's anything limiting about this, we should imagine that we are standing in the base of Migdash. We'll come to this another time as well. That's actually halach and shochan aruch. That when a person is davening, he should try to have kavanah for, as I'm standing there in the Kodesh Kadashim. But the idea is that tefillah is supposed to be an experience in which I am able to break away from my physical self and to reach a place which is high, so to speak. We don't necessarily mean that in a literal sense, but a very transcendent place, a place which is very different from my everyday normal experience. But at the same time, at that moment, and ultimately the goal of prayer is to influence and bring me back to this place where I am right here, right here with my feet on the ground. Is that simple? Absolutely not. And we can understand and appreciate a little bit why it is so important, not just that we have this conversation, but to appreciate that this is a very, very expansive conversation. That this is not just a simple, like, how do we blow a shofar? How do we eat matzo? Where there are really, really just sort of technical definitions, maybe some tricks, maybe some hacks we need to discuss, and then good, and then we've covered our bases. When it comes to davening, every time we daven, we face a, a battle of sorts, a struggle between the body and the soul. There are two different parts to our existence, uh, which constantly pull us in two different directions. This tension doesn't have to be an unhealthy tension. It doesn't have to be a painful one. It actually is, by design, a very healthy tension. Our goal in this world is to find, try to constantly find a balance between the two. And there are times that we are modulating that. And there are times that we are hopefully always monitoring it. But when it comes to davening, we have to take both parts of our existence, sort of hold them together simultaneously, and turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with both our body and our soul. And that's not easy. And so for, for, the, for those of us, which I include, which I assume includes many of us, many maybe most of us, I dare say all of us who sometimes feel that we struggle in davening, maybe that's one of the reasons. It, there, there may be other reasons as well. It could be that we're not preparing properly. It could be that we're not thinking thoughtfully and strategically about where we daven and when we daven. And it could certainly be, and we're going to start on Thursday, Bez or Shem, we don't even know the words that we're saying. I don't even know what, what I, don't, I literally don't even know what I'm saying. There could be other reasons why it's a struggle. But on a very, very basic level, that struggle emanates from the simple fact that we are trying to do something which is extraordinarily difficult. And that is to simultaneously take our body and our soul, hold them together, as the Gemara says, right? So she can aim of Lamata, Libo Lamala, and turn to the Rabona Shalom, to turn to our Creator as both a body and a soul. And to hold these two almost like competing forces. There are magnets which draw the two together, and there are also, there's a force which repels one for the other. And to hold the two together in comfortable space and daven. I know what I'm speaking about right now seems like very, it's very undefined. Well, some of you may be thinking, maybe all of you, what is dogma? I don't get it. But I think this conversation needs to start a little bit there, talking about experiences and ideas that are actually a little, little hard to, to define in the most concrete terms. But this is it, my friends. This is the tension. Trying to figure out how to keep my feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, as somebody once said. So that is going to be our avoda. So on Tuesdays, please God, from this Tuesday going forward, we are going to try to talk about how to effectively and properly dive in. And we're going to not necessarily come back to this every week, but we're going to try to really highlight this natural tension that exists within the experience of tefillah. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.